especially for law enforcement officers, things can go south in a hurry. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Harvey, Louisiana in the United States. Here we see an officer-related incident that started with the officer pulling over a car and escalates beyond belief. It's 3 a.m. and officers have pulled a car over that they suspect as being stolen. And a 16-year-old or 17-year-old, depending on the news story you read, young man jumps out of the car and starts heading into this gas station and walking briskly away from the officers when the action starts. And you can see him walking in left to right here and he puts his hands in the air. Hey, don't shoot me. You know, hands up, don't shoot. And you notice that he pulls his right hand in and from concealment draws a gun, shoots the officer in the right hip and then runs off. The officer did fire back, did not hit the perp, but the officers did catch him a short time later and the officer made a full recovery. Scary how fast that escalated. You know, if you want to learn how to train more to get better at self-defense, join us on the Active Self-Protection Extra channel where we post stuff every single week, videos and tips about moral and legal self-defense and firearms training and empty-handed skills so that you can be at your best. Out of this particular video, I want to talk about the obscure factor and how concealment works for us and against us. I also want to talk about emotional fitness and the importance of being first to put shots on target. So let's think about feigned compliance from the perspective of the bad guy here. You see this guy's just walked off. And, and now listen, the officers have pulled this guy over and he's just walked away from that. And now this officer has to chase him down. Now this is something that's fairly unique to law enforcement, friends. They face challenges that those of us who are not law enforcement do not face on a daily basis. If that happened to you or me, we would just let him go and we'd probably call the cops. However, the officer has to chase this guy down. He's going to have to get him in custody. He's in a stolen car, those kind of things. This is one of the reasons I respect law enforcement so highly. It's the job they have to do. Now, let's think about feigned compliance here. This guy's got his hands in the air. Look, I'm, I'm totally compliant, whatever, but he's not compliant. He's sending mixed signals. He's walking away. So you could say, aha, he has his hands in the air, and so he's not a threat to the officer. But you, you've already seen it. You understand how quickly that can change. And so it is natural, it is good, it is right for officers to be very wary of somebody in this kind of situation. If he was actually compliant, he would not be walking away from the officer. But he did walk away, and so those dual signals, the officer has to trust the most resistant signal. Now, you notice he goes behind the pillar here and uses that as concealment cover, really, to draw a firearm. You gotta recognize the second you get eyes off of somebody, they can emerge as a threat in a big fat hurry. Now, in a general sense, it doesn't mean anybody that's ducked behind a pillar is gonna pull a gun on you, but in this totality of the circumstances here, this would absolutely be a huge red flag that something bad is happening right now. And cover and concealment work both ways. Yes, they can hide you from the bad guy, but they can also hide you not being able to see the bad guy, so pay attention to that. Now, notice this guy runs across and you can see him make that shot there, and that is just the luckiest shot on earth. And sometimes it's just your number, that this guy got a shot off on the officer and hit him in the right hip. I don't blame the officer for not having a gun in his hand before this, recognizing all, again, the totality of the circumstances, but sometimes the guy's just gonna get a lucky hit on you and it's a competition and sometimes he gets lucky. But in that instant, then, you have to stay in the fight. He's hit in the hip, but he's not dead. He can still fight, and that takes great emotional fitness, and I'm grateful that this officer had it. Now, you're going to see him very quickly draw his firearm and try to get after the guy, but he's not going to get any hits. Very difficult to get hits from there. Guy's going to run off, and his partners are going to catch him a little bit later. And you can see the officer just barely there in the bottom left, you know, the left side of the screen, and he has fallen over because he's been shot in the hip. And now, friends, again, once you're there dealing with the stuff, having strong first aid skills, keeping your first aid equipment on you. This officer is injured and down. He cannot get up to go get his medical kit in the car. So having your medical equipment on your person, knowing how to use it, having the skills to stop those kind of junctional injuries is a very smart and wise thing for all self-defenders to do as they cover their ass. 